All right, in this project, we're going to create a landscape, and we're going to design it um, with a 4K resolution in mind. So if you were perhaps in video game design, this might be something that you do for concept art or per, potentially for even creating assets in the game. So uh, Ultra HD um, here in pixelcom slash E is the 4K resolution. It's 3840 pixels by 2160, and uh, we're not going to have a background, so we'll go ahead and we'll hit Create. It's going to leave us with a... A rectangular workspace that looks like this. A scroll wheel will let you go in and out. You can also use two fingers um, on your trackpad to go in and out as well. You can also slide the uh, zoom over here as well. The first thing that we're going to do is go to Pixlr. We're going to find a reference image and uh, this is uh, an image that I'll have linked in the description below. And Basically we're just going to copy this because we're going to borrow the color palette from this. And this uh, project that we're doing today is largely inspired by a Thomas Brush tutorial who is a video game designer. I will also link his video in the description below. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to use this in order to establish our color palette. So using the arrange tool I'm just resizing this like so. And what I want to do is I want to take my foreground color and grab this cool sunset sunrise, can't really tell, uh, purple right in here. And then I'm going to take the orange from the sky right in here, and I'm going to create a new layer that's going to be empty. I'm going to take my gradient tool, and I'm going to uh, create a gradient that looks like it. so, sort of the sun coming up from the bottom, sort of the idea. Now the next thing that we're going to do is create another new empty layer, and here we're going to use the selection tool, the lasso tool, the polygonal lasso tool right here. And we're going to create some mountains in the back. And so you can see I'm just going to set them up like so. I'm just sort of clicking and letting go and clicking and letting go. It's sort of the nature of how the polygonal lasso tool works. I'm going to double click to end it. You're going to see that sort of fill in this space. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my foreground color. I'm going to select one of these lighter shades of purple uh, right in here. Hit OK. And I'm going to take my paint bucket and I'm going to fill in on this new layer inside of the selection, like so. Now I want this to be a little bit different, so I'm going to go to my adjustments, brightness and contrast. I'm going to lower the brightness just a little bit, like so, and hit apply. All right, I'm going to press Command D or Control D to deselect. And I'm basically going to repeat this process a couple times to create a couple rows. Uh, of hills. So new empty layer, polygonal lasso tool again. I'm going to come in here, create my second row of hills. I'm going to have it sort of not match it exactly. You can have some fun with it like so. Come all the way around here and then double click to close it out. And I'm going to fill it again with the paint buck in this uh, new layer. And I am again going to go to adjustments. I'm going to go to brightness and contrast. I'm going to make this one even darker like so. Make sure that's distinctly different. And then I'm going to repeat this process one more time. Empty layer. I'm going to grab my polygonal, oops, polygonal lasso tool and create one more row of hills like so. Alright, double click to close that off. <clears throat> Grab my paint bucket, fill that in on the new layer, and I'm going to, again, lower the brightness even further. There's a couple of different ways that you could change the color. This is just one technique that I'm doing where I'm applying a brightness and contrast adjustment to the selected layer. I'm going to click Apply. And then I'm going to press Command D to deselect. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this gradient layer and I'm actually going to duplicate it, but I'm going to bring it all the way to the top and I'm going to lower the transparency significantly. Uh, so put it at about like 10, about 10% 10 right here. And just sort of creating that haze and sort of applying it over everything, sort of tying things together, creating a bit of continuity in that regard. 
and now I'll exit out of there. You can see the difference that versus that. It's not much, but it's, it's a little bit. I'm next I'm going to take my range tool and I'm just going to um, reposition some of these mountains. So I turned off that top gradient layer just a little bit. I'm going to lower this down and I'll lower that down as well. Make sure everything is nice and centered like so. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, create uh, a textured layer on top of everything. So on Pixabay, I have this textured uh, paper layer. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to uh, press Command V to paste it. And I'm just going to pull it up in the top corner and then resize it all the way down to here. And I'll lift it up just a little bit so it's about centered, more or less. Not exactly, but that's probably pretty good. And now I'm going to change my blend mode to multiply and I'm going to lower the opacity. Again, that uh, the reason I'm doing this is it's going to sort of tie uh, you know, all of these various separate layers all together. I think I want to have it just around like 25% or so, just to get a little bit of that grunge um, there in the picture. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a title. I'm calling uh, this game, what am I going to call this game? I'm going to call this game Highlands. I grew up on a street called Highland, so I'm going to create a new text layer. I'm going to write in all caps Highlands, and I'm going to choose from my choice of fonts here. Is a font starts with an F called Flamingo that I think looks kind of cool. So I'll go down to here and find Flamingo. Sort of has a, an old school sort of feel to it. I'll make this really big. Change that to white like so. I'm going to change the settings here, the letter spacing, which is oftentimes referred to as tracking or kerning. I'm going to set that, just set it up where it looks a little bit more cinematic. And I'll bring that up into this sky area here. I'm going to knock down the transparency on that layer as well. Uh, probably around the eyeball it a little bit, but I think about 65, eh, about 60% looks right to me. I'm feeling that. Now if you want to have some more fun with this, you could create another text layer also using the Flamingo font just to enhance the continuity of it. And I'm going to create a, a menu system that says like play, options, and quit. And I'll select that all. I'm going to make the, the font much smaller than that so it actually fits on the screen. I'll use my move tool, my, or my range tool, to position it accordingly. But one other thing I'm going to do is take my uh, text tool. I'm going to adjust the line spacing, or what uh, is often referred to as leading. I'm going to bump that to about 32. Eh, let's go 28, 26, somewhere in there. So it looks like a menu system for a video game. I'm going to match the opacity that I have on this title up here, which, as you'll recall, is set to 60%, so we'll do the same thing right here. We're going to knock that down as well to 60%. Now we're going to do one more trick where we're going to save this uh, whole thing. Oh, let's get this thing a little bit further down. That's feeling better there. Where we're going to, <clears throat> yeah, let's make this a little bit smaller. Somebody's got to fine tune things. There, I'm feeling that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go, this is a technique um, where we're going to save everything as a JPEG image. I'm just going to save it to my, uh, call it landscape here, save it to my desktop. And I will then add it back to the project so that I can then add effects across all of the layers because uh, it's now a flattened layer if you will. So I'm going to add a little bit of grain. It's just going to add a little bit of texture to everything. It's almost imperceptible. Click apply. Um, I'm also going to change the vignetting. It's just going to can make it look a little bit more cinematic at about 35 to 40 percent right in there all right then I would save it and I would call that a project